Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting logarithmic equation. First of all, let's ask this question. Is this equation possible? Let's find out. So we have log of x plus y equals log of x minus log of y. As you know, we do have the product rule and the quotient rule, but we don't have a rule for sums. But what we're going to do is we're going to be applying that rule kind of backwards and see how we can find solutions from here. So, I have log of x plus y is equal to the right-hand side. Now, as you know, the right-hand side can be written as a quotient. But first of all, let's talk about the domain of this function. Obviously, we want this function to be well-defined, so x plus y needs to be greater than 0. We want x to be greater than 0, and we want y to be greater than 0. Obviously, when x and y are both positive, their sum is also going to be positive, so these two conditions will definitely Im imply the third one. So, having said that, let's go ahead and start with this. As you know, log of x minus log of y can be written as what? We can replace it with log of x over y. So this is kind of like the quotient rule, but being used backwards. Okay, now, I got the equality of logs so basically I can say that by the way when I say log you should understand base 10 but this doesn't matter in any base this will work so what we're gonna do okay we have the equality so we're going to set these two equal but we'll always remember these conditions x needs to be positive and y needs to be positive so from here we get x plus y is equal to x over y obviously y is positive, therefore, we don't have the problem of y being equal to 0. So this is always going to be defined. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. We get xy plus y squared is equal to x. Now, this equation kind of looks complicated because we have two variables and y is being squared. But one of the nicest things in algebra is if you have the squ square of a variable, you can always turn it into a quadratic equation. It doesn't matter what the other variable is. So you can have a cube, you can have a fourth power, but as long as you have some variable squared, you can go ahead and turn it into a quadratic equation. So we can write it as y squared plus xy minus x is equal to zero. So I'm trying to write this equation as a quadratic in y. Okay, and don't ask why. All right. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. Obviously, best method here, I think, is the quadratic formula. Since it's not factorable, at least not easy. So I can write y as negative b, which is x in this case, b is x, plus minus the square root of the discriminant. As you know, the discriminant is b, b squared minus 4ac, so it's going to be x squared minus 4 times 1 times negative x. That's going to be a positive 4x and all over 2 times a, which is 2 in this case. Now, we are got to be careful at this point because, remember, we want our x and y values both to be positive. But then the question is, is this always going to be a positive quantity? That's the question we need, we need to ask. And the answer is no. Why? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. First of all, we know that x is positive. So, if x is positive, then one of the values of y is negative x minus the square root of x squared plus 4x divided by 2. Obviously, negative x is negative and you're subtracting a positive quantity, so this is going to be negative for positive values of x. And you can also verify this in a different way by solving an inequality, but it's easy to see that this quantity is negative if x is positive. So we're not going to accept this solution basically because it's not going to uh, define the function well. We're going to take the other solution. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like and also make sure that it's always positive. The other solution is negative x plus the square root of x squared plus 4x divided by 2. So a million dollar question is, is this quantity always positive? And if it's not, when is it positive, right? Because we already said that x needs to be positive, but what if this quantity is not always positive for positive values of x? So that's what we need to check. But one quick check is going to tell you the following. The square root of x squared plus 4x is always going to be greater than x because x is 
the square root of x squared, as you know, obviously in this case x is positive, so we don't have to deal with absolute, absolute value. So in this case, uh, x squared plus 4x is greater than x squared because x is positive, therefore this is true. Which means that when I write my y value like this, you'll see better, you're going to notice that the first quantity is, I mean this one, is greater than this one. Therefore, their difference is going to be positive, which means that our y values are going to be positive, which means that this is going to be a good solution. Now, at this point, we can do the following. We got the solution, but of course, there are infinitely many solutions to this equation, right? And let's go ahead and use a parameter, a third variable, that will represent all solutions as an ordered pair. And this is how, what we can do. Since uh, we have uh, that x and y are both positive, let's go ahead and set x equal to t. And from here, we get the y value. Of course, in this case, t needs to be positive. That's the requirement. And when t is positive, x is going to be positive, and therefore y is going to be positive. But y can be written now as the square root of t squared minus, I mean, four, plus 4t four minus t divided by 2. And that means I can write my solutions now as an ordered pair. Let's go ahead and write the answer as an ordered pair, and let's see what that looks like. So x comma y can be written as t comma square root of t squared plus 4t minus t divided by 2. And this basically gives you all the solutions in parametric form, which means that for different values of t, you're going to get different solutions. Of course, t has to be positive. Let's not forget that. Okay? All right. Now, what is this supposed to mean? Let's talk a little bit about this expression here. For example, if t is equal to 1, then you're going to plug in t equals 1 everywhere, and this is going to give you 1 comma square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. And as you know, this is somewhat a special value, right? Okay, hopefully you've seen that before. Now, you may also do this backwards, that which value is going to give you square root of 5 plus 1 over 2 for the y, and you just need to solve for t. Or if t is equal to something like square root of 3, then from here we're going to get square root of 3, comma, square root of 3 plus 4, square root of 3, minus square root of 3, divided by 2. You can make it as crazy as you want, but obviously for infinitely many positive values of t, we get infinitely many ordered pairs that are solutions to this equation. This means that this equation is possible. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.